Hello friends and welcome back to the shop. Today we are starting a, uh, a new series on a pipe refurbishment for a friend and this is for uh, Amy Mack who asked me to take a look at this pipe and see if I could do anything to sort of make it more interesting. So she purchased the pipe and uh, felt that it just didn't have the uh, the look she was hoping for, uh, she's just not thrilled by the way it looks, and she asked me if I could, uh, well, I, I, I don't know exactly the words to use, but, but make it more interesting. <clears throat> I was going to say jazz it up, but I don't think Amy was really looking for jazzy. So, what we have here is a very nice pipe. Um, this is a Dr. Grable, and it is a Starfire. Um, and it is a uh, Starfire with an adjustomatic stem, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that and, and about the pipe itself. Uh, but before I get into those kind of details, I want you to notice just how good condition this pipe is in. Um, this pipe is practically like new. Uh, so I think Amy really wanted to uh, to challenge me here because uh, I'm I'm a I'm a restorer. I, I don't really like to change things. You'll notice I don't do a lot of rustications on pipes. I kind of like to keep them as close to the original maker's uh, design as possible. And this pipe almost looks like a pipe that I would be finished working on. And now I have to figure out what to do with it. So uh, it's really in fantastic condition. Uh, I, I'll, I'll show you that there's a few oddities here. So. There are a few places, and I do not know if I'm going to be able to get this to focus well enough. There's a few, yeah, you can see there, there's a few sort of what I would call pocket uh, dents. You know, somebody put this in a pocket with some keys or some change or something. They're not very deep. They're really just sort of uh, impressions in the finish more than anything. And there is some very, very minor tooth chatter on the stem that'll come out quite easily. I mean, these are just barely uh, visible indentations. But the odd thing is, other than that, I can find no evidence that this pipe has ever been smoked. It seems to have an original bowl coating on it. The coating is a bit thin at the bottom, but this does not seem to be cake. It's not sooty at all. Um, I, I really think that's a bowl coating. And the inside is absolutely immaculate. Um, it has this perfectly clean stinger. Uh, put a pipe cleaner through it, there's nothing that comes out. I mean, it, it's like a new unsmoked pipe, with the exception of these, uh, these minor imperfections in the bowl and a little bit of tooth chatter. And I feel almost like uh, somebody used this as a prop or something rather than as a smoking pipe. Uh, but it's in great shape. So the Starfire is, is a really interesting um, series from Dr. Grabo. And it was made for quite a while. Uh, the, it was named after the, the Oldsmobile Starfire. And the Oldsmobile Starfire was um, first put out in 1954. And the Dr. Grabo Starfire line began in 1956. And they continued to make these up to 1992. Now, from the research I've done, I've been able to find that uh, one of the ways to date these pipes is to look for a... Um, shape snapping. So there was a two-digit shape number stamped on some of them. And this pipe does not have that feature. So if I can get this to focus, I'll tell you what is written here. Uh, let me try a little bit of sideways light on this because it's not coming out very well. There we go. So it's imported briar, adjustomatic, and then the patent number, which you're probably not going to be able to read, but I will tell you it is uh, 2461, huh, I can't read it either. Uh, well, I'll, I'll put the patent number down in the, uh, in the description. There we go, 2461605. Um, and that patent is for, I've looked it up, and it is for the adjustomatic stem. What's neat about these is, uh, they were designed with these screw-in stems and an aluminum, uh, shank extension. And that was, and, and this is this part here is what is what is the adjustomatic. So it's got a stinger. The stinger is removable. So if you don't like stingers, Amy, you can just pull it right out. Uh, but this is what constitutes the adjustomatic stem because what this does, which is really quite nice, is you know right now the stem is perfectly clocked, 
if over time, you know, this, this starts to loosen up and, and, and you wind up with something where, you know, this is how your stem is tightening now. You, in a, you've seen me with other pipes, you have to then heat this up and, and you know, loosen the glue and all that. Well, the adjustomatic is designed so you can just turn it around. So any time the stem becomes overclocked, you can just adjust it yourself very easily. And the only catch is you do have to keep this clean because uh, it can get corroded and uh, that'll inhibit the um, the working. So sometimes you put a drop of oil down in there or, you know, just keep it clean and it should work just fine. Uh, and this one is in perfect working order. So these pipes, the Starfires with the adjustomatic stems and no uh, shape stamping on them were uh, made probably after 1980. So this pipe is placed somewhere between 1980 and 1992. So it's not an ancient gray bow, but it is, like I said, in, in absolutely fantastic shape. So the question is, what do I do to this pipe to uh, make it more to Amy's liking? And I don't really like to take a pipe like this and rusticate it or anything like that because I, I think that it's just beautiful as is. <clears throat> there are a few what appear to be fills. They're very minor. Uh, one thing that I should note about the, the Starfire is that uh, they use their top quality briar for this line as well. So these were all grade one or grade two briar blocks that were used to make these pipes. And you can see the grain is actually quite nice. There's, there's some bird's eye in there, there's some somewhat wild flame grain, but it's got interest. It's just kind of a muddled finish. Um, and I can understand why Amy might not have been thrilled when she when she first saw this. It looks almost uh, dirty, and it's not. It's, it's, it's a very clean pipe. But it's just that the finish is so muddled. So what I think I'm going to do with this is really quite simple. I'm going to strip off this finish, see what the pipe looks like underneath. In a few spots here where there are fills, I think you can see there's a couple right there, I'll take those fills out and replace them with epoxy, which will take the stain better and, and, and hide the fills a bit better. Sand out any of those imperfections that might be present. And then we'll give this a contrast stain. And what I'm thinking about doing is, uh, is, a, is a color scheme where we'll do a, a dark brown uh, stain of the grain and sand that off so that we're just seeing the grain stand out. And then put a light, uh, probably a mixture of brown and ox blood on this, but, but thinned out quite a bit because I don't want to make it red, but I just want it to have a red overtone. Uh, and I think that'll definitely, uh, if it works, that'll really add some interest to this because it'll bring out this this, this beautiful grain and highlight it a bit uh, with some of those red highlights. So we'll see how that works. Beyond that, you know, I'm going to polish up the stem, uh, polish up the silver band, and, and give the whole thing a, an overall buffing. But I don't think there's a lot more that I could do with this unless we really want to get into, you know, things like rustication or... Uh, making a new stem for it, but to make a new stem I would unfortunately have to destroy this one by removing the adjustomatic fitting to put into the new stem, and I, I really don't want to do that because it is in such pristine shape. And I know gray bows are not terribly expensive, but they are, you know, there are people that collect them. And this is an example of, uh, you know, it's it's not going to be worth a lot. It's, it's probably, you know, I'm, I'm just guessing here, but you're, you're probably not going to see these sell for more than like twenty to thirty dollars, but for for a gray book collector that's trying to complete a set of Starfires, this is a this is a very nice pipe to have. So I don't want to I don't want to take anything away from sort of the historic value of the pipe. So Amy, I hope you uh, you understand that, and I hope you agree with the approach that I'm that I'm planning on taking. I will wait until I get a thumbs up from you <laughs> one way or the other, uh, or a thumbs down, and we can we could talk about what else uh, we might do to it, uh, but. In the meantime, uh, the plan will be to strip off the finish and apply a new finish and see, see what we've got then. So with that, I will bring this video to a close, and I'll thank you all for watching. If you're subscribed, thanks for that. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to follow this project, like I said, it should probably only be one video, maybe two more, depending on what we run into. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe so that you can stay on top of it. And if you guys have any uh, any comments, any things you think might add to the uh, attractiveness of this pipe, go ahead and let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear your suggestions. And uh, hopefully we can make something that, that uh, Amy will enjoy smoking. Thank you all, 
and I will look forward to talking to you all again real soon. Goodbye now.